What causes speciation? Speciation is the evolutionary process by which reproductively isolated biological populations evolve to become distinct species. A lot of things cause this, but here's one, reproductive barriers. Before that, we should talk about what a species actually is. One definition of a species is known as the biological species concept. Now that we've covered that, let's get back to speciation and reproductive isolation. So what is reproductive isolation? Reproductive isolation is the inability to reproduce with other groups or populations. Reproductive isolation can be ca caused by specific reproductive barriers. There are two main types of reproductive barriers, prezygotic and postzygotic. Pre refers to before conception, while post occurs after. Now let's begin with the six types of prezygotic barriers that occur in the habitats around us. Habitat isolation is when two species live in the same geographic location but different ecological areas or habitats. Let's talk about birds. As you can see, both of these types of birds live in the same geographical location. However, because one's natural habitat is the wooded forest and another is a marshy marsh, they never have the opportunity to mate. Oh no! This separates the two birds and helps them evolve into very different species. Temporal isolation happens when two species reproduce or breed at different times or seasons. So we did location, but now we have to do time. Consider these two frogs. Both the red-legged frog and the yellow-legged frog live in the same geographic location and are similar species. However, the red-legged frogs only breed in the winter, burr, while the yellow-legged frogs breed in the beautiful spring. Geographical isolation happens when a ba physical barrier separates the two species. For example, two organisms of the same species live in a specific area. However, a volcano erupts nearby. Now, because of the natural occurrence, the organisms are separated into two groups and will eventually develop into different species and be unable to mate. Behavioral isolation happens when species-specific signals, behaviors, and rituals are used to attract a mate of similar species. Birds again. When you hear birds chirping, you may notice that with each different bird comes a different song. While these little tunes are examples of behavioral isolation, individuals of certain species are only attracted to the song of the same species and will not mate with one another. What can I say? Birds are picky. Mechanical isolation is when morphological differences between males and females prevent them from mating. This could include size, shape, or location. For instance, most snails have spiral shells. However, some snails have clockwise spirals, while others, less cool snails, have counterclockwise spirals. Snails with spirals going in different directions can't mate because they don't fit together, if you catch my drift. Gametic isolation is when gametes of different species meet but do not fuse to form a zygote. Sometimes the egg and sperm just aren't right for each other. The sperm becomes unable to fertilize the egg either because it is weak and unable to penetrate the egg receptor, or because it's a failure and cannot survive in the female reproductive tract. Either way, the sperm shall not pass and the organisms shall not reproduce. Gametic isolation is the last of the prezygotic barriers. Now we move forward onto postzygotic barriers. Reduced hybrid viability is when hybrid zygotes fail to develop or mature. While the hybrid zygote is capable of forming, the embryo dies after a few cell divisions because the combined genetic material cannot sustain the organism. For example, if a frog and a salamander tried to reproduce, you could successfully create a fralamander, but shortly after you would be left with a dead hybrid because the very different types of genetic material are insufficient to sustain a hybrid. Reduced hybrid fertility is when a viable hybrid is produced but is sterile, so unable to reproduce. The reason this occurs is that the two species have different chromosome numbers, so when the offspring goes to perform meiosis, the chromosomes cannot segregate in a manner that allows them to be fertile. The classic example shown above is when a horse is mated to a donkey, producing a mule. But the horse and the donkey are obviously fer fer fertile, but the mule is not because it has a different chromosome number and is therefore inferior. Hybrid breakdown is a decline in viability expressed in the F2 or later generations compared to the F1 or parental generations. Examples of this can be seen in perennials which have been hybridized, such as Iris and Your Mom. In this case, the F2 generation plants are much weaker than their F1 parent counterparts. However, they are not completely sterile. As they continue to reproduce, they will eventually become sterile or inviable, and the hybrids will cease to exist. That's all, folks.